Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a really clever neural network architecture called a Lagrangian neural network that bakes in kind of the Euler-Lagrange equation structure into a neural network to dramatically improve its performance uh, when you know estimating and predicting and modeling uh, mechanical systems like a double pendulum. Okay, so this is one of my favorite uh, kind of custom neural networks because it really does a clever job of baking physics into, into the architecture and loss function, and it has really, really uh, good performance. So um, it's kind of a riff on the uh, Hamiltonian neural networks. I talked about this in another video where if you have a system that you know has some Hamiltonian structure, like it's got, you know, it conserves energy or something like that, then instead of just naively learning the time derivative of your, your state vector q and p, q are positions and p are momenta, uh, instead of just building a neural network to learn q dot and p dot, which is kind of the naive thing you could do, a Hamiltonian neural network learns the intermediate Hamiltonian function h so that if you take its derivatives, its partial derivatives in the right way, you can get q dot and p dot. Okay, so it's a clever way of making your neural network learn this intermediate Hamiltonian function so that you can enforce this Hamiltonian or symplectic structure on the equations of motion. So we already talked about that. And the Lagrangian neural network is kind of an extension or a riff on that Hamiltonian network idea, but it has some key advantages that I'm going to talk about. And so it's, I think the, you know, uh, Gradonis was from the original paper, but Cranmer, Hoyer, Battaglia, Spurgle, and Ho uh, are kind of new authors on this Lagrangian neural network paper, okay? Uh, and those of you who know me know that I'm a huge fan of Miles Cranmer and Shirley Ho's work, so it's kind of no surprise that this is a rock star paper. Okay, so the idea here, in physics, uh, for mechanical systems, for kind of classical mechanics, you have these two essentially equivalent perspectives that you can take on uh, writing down the equations of motion. You can write down a Lagrangian and write down the Euler-Lagrange equations, which is kind of a variational approach to physics. Or you can write down the Hamiltonian and Hamilton's equations, which in principle, these are, you know, in most situations, pretty much equivalent. They're kind of dual versions of the same picture. There are some subtle differences that I'm not gonna get into, but you can think of these as being pretty uh, complementary. So there's the Lagrangian perspective, the Hamiltonian perspective, they're pretty closely related. And this paper takes the Lagrangian perspective so again, instead of just naively learning uh, an equation for q double dot using some feedforward network as a function of q and q dot, what a Lagrangian neural network does is it learns a neural network model for an intermediate function called the Lagrangian so that if you take the partial derivatives of the Lagrangian in the right way, you recover the Euler-Lagrange equations and you enforce that that has to be true in your loss function. So the Lagrangian neural network is a really clever way of choosing an architecture. This is an architectural choice to, to model the Lagrangian and a choice of the loss function to make sure that the Euler-Lagrange equations are satisfied given that Lagrangian. And so this is really important for systems that have some kind of you know, conservation law or symmetry. Generally speaking, if I do this naive thing here, if I have a system that has energy conservation or some kind of symmetry that, um, that I know should be enforced, if I do this naive thing, typically that conservation, that, that conserved quantity is not preserved uh, and that symmetry is broken by this naive choice up here. So in the case of this double pendulum, you might have energy kind of eventually bleed out or blow up. Whereas if you enforce this Lagrangian, this Euler-Lagrange structure, you're much more likely to preserve, to conserve that energy or to preserve that symmetry that you know about in your system. So this is a super, super powerful approach if you know that your system has some symmetries or some conserved quantities or this kind of Lagrangian structure. This is a really, really uh, simple and powerful way of baking that into your neural network architecture. Yeah. <laughs>
And one of my gripes with the original Hamiltonian neural network uh, paper is, you know, they looked at really simple toy problems. Here, uh, Cranmer et al. are actually looking at a pretty challenging case of this double pendulum. This is a chaotic system. Uh, it's very hard to integrate um, using traditional methods. So this is a good test case. And again, uh, just kind of a little bit of tiny bit of history lesson here. Um, you know, Lagrangian dynamics is not something new in the machine learning era. You know, this has been around for a couple hundred years, right? We've been developing Lagrangian dynamics for a long time. It kind of is the natural evolution of New Newton's picture of, of dynamical systems uh, for mechanical systems. It's a very natural way for us to incorporate ideas like invariance and symmetry and conservation laws. So Noether's theorem and symmetries is one of the most fundamental concepts in all of mathematical physics, not just of the modern era, but like ever written down is this idea that uh, symmetries, um, you know, give rise to conserved quantities in Hamiltonian or Lagrangian systems hugely important idea here. And the Lagrangian perspective allows us to uh, encapsulate those symmetries, to understand those symmetries in a very systematic and methodical way. And if you want to learn more about it, there's this fantastic book uh, by Marsden and Ratu, Introduction to Mechanics and Symmetry. Calling it an introduction is, uh, I think, a little bit um, uh, cute because it's actually a pretty advanced book, but it talks all about Lagrangian dynamics, Hamiltonian dynamics, how you handle symmetries, um, tons of examples of systems. It's a really, really good book if you want to learn more about the history uh, and implementation of these before the machine learning era. And again, you know, lots and lots of systems can be written down with Euler-Lagrange equations with a Lagrangian or with a Hamiltonian. So simple mechanical systems like a pendulum are, you know, you can write down the Euler-Lagrange equations for those. These are easy to integrate using a numerical integrator like a runge kutta scheme, uh, very easy to integrate accurately forward in time. But other systems like the double pendulum, just adding one more pendulum arm, makes this actually very hard to integrate. So this is also a Lagrangian system or you know, can be re re represented by the Euler-Lagrange equations. But this system is very hard to numerically integrate. The reason I'm telling you about this is because there's a parallel between how we numerically integrate these systems and how we would model them in the modern era using a neural network. So, if I integrated this system using something simple like a, a runge kutta fourth order, this ODE45 scheme, what you'll see, so energy should be conserved in the idealized double pendulum. If I don't have friction, energy should be conserved. So my yellow benchmark solution here, if I look at the energy, it should be a constant value of 60. Whatever my initial energy is, it should be constant throughout my simulation. But if I use a naive integrator like ODE45, this is just a runge kutta fourth order integrator, you see that very quickly my solution starts to diverge and my energy eventually blows up. That's really bad news. Um, you don't want your you know, conserved quantity to not be conserved in your integrator. That's a huge problem. And so there is a large class of numerical integrators called variational integrators, and they are designed specifically to respect the Euler-Lagrange structure, the structure of the Euler-Lagrange equations given a specific Lagrangian. So I can write down the Lagrangian for this pendulum, and I can come up with a custom variational integrator that is much more likely to preserve energy or that conserved quantity for this system. That's the, the pink curve here, and it does a much, much, much better job of keeping that energy constant. So variational integrators are used all across uh, scientific computing. If you want to predict the motion of the planets and the asteroids and, and all of the moons, that's a pretty nasty, chaotic system that is also you know, governed by Euler-Lagrange equations. We might use a variational integrator if we want to know 500 years from now if an asteroid is going to come close to Earth, where it really matters that you actually are doing a good job here. So I'm telling you this because this is directly paralleling what we're doing with the Lagrangian neural network. There's the naive thing to do, which is this blue runge kutta curve here, and it's not going to do a good job. You need to bake in that Euler-Lagrange structure into your integrator, and then you do a great job. It's going to be the same idea in the neural network. If we bake in that Euler-Lagrange structure, it's going to have a much better chance of preserving our symmetries and our conserved quantities.
And so we already talked about um, this idea of um, symplectic integrators that preserve Hamiltonian structure. And so similarly, there is this idea of variational integrators that preserve this Euler-Lagrange structure. Okay, so I already talked about this a little bit. This is uh, my favorite paper to look into variational integrators. This thing is a beast. It's like 150 pages long. It talks about all of these classic integration schemes and how they're special cases of this variational integrator idea. Really, really powerful um, ideas in here, really comprehensive. And this is the topic of Matt West's uh, thesis in 2004. So this is really the source uh, for these algorithms. And that's kind of paralleling what we're doing in this modern machine learning era with this Lagrangian neural network. So the idea here is uh, instead of just naively learning the differential equation, the, the, a neural network for the differential equation governing those those state variables, q and q dot, that define my system. That would be like theta and theta dot for this pendulum. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to learn an intermediate Lagrangian function with our neural network. And then we're going to use auto diff to take the necessary partial differential, uh, partial derivatives of that Lagrangian. And we're going to add in a term in our loss function that the Euler Lagrange equations are satisfied by that Lagrangian. So you're learning a Lagrangian so that Euler Lagrange equations are satisfied. That's a really clever way of baking in Lagrangian dynamics into your neural network. And they compared this against a number of leading algorithms like uh, a standard naive neural net, the neural ODE, a Hamiltonian neural network, uh, and, you know, and others. And so there are some key benefits over the Hamiltonian neural network, which I think is kind of the closest idea, which a Hamiltonian neural network, this is kind of a subtle point, but it's really important, and they make it multiple times. In a Hamiltonian neural network, you need to know the right choice of variables q and p. If you have a configuration variable, a shape variable, or kind of a position variable q, you need to know what its associated conjugate momentum variable p is. Sometimes that's really easy. If I have a mass on a spring, I know how to compute the momentum variable that goes with the position variable. But in some cases in Lagrangian dynamics or in Hamiltonian dynamics, it's actually kind of messy to get those variables p, those right variables p. And that's a limitation of uh, the Hamiltonian neural network is that you need to have the right kind of intrinsic coordinates ahead of time. Whereas this Lagrangian neural network will work you know, for kind of an arbitrary choice of q and q dot. So it's a little bit more flexible and it's more likely to work in nasty cases where it's hard to compute those conjugate momenta. So for those of you who, you know, remember your classic mechanics physics, sometimes getting those conjugate momenta is actually kind of tricky. Uh, and that's, I guess, what I'm saying here. Hamiltonian neural networks requires what are called these canonical coordinates, and Lagrangian neural networks don't require those canonical coordinates. So it's easier, uh, it's easier to work with just whatever variables you like. Okay, so same idea as a Hamiltonian neural network, though. We're learning this intermediate function L, the Lagrangian uh, of the system, and then we're going to use kind of um, you know, automatic differentiability to compute the necessary partial derivatives. So we learn this Lagrangian with a neural network. We know that the Lagrangian should satisfy these Euler-Lagrange equations. This is actually one of the most fundamental and um, universally true uh, equations in all of physics. So uh, this is a differential equation that summarizes the principle of least action, the, the least action principle. And the principle of least action is true in quantum mechanics, in general relativity, special relativity, classical mechanics, optics, electromagnetism. It's basically always true. And so that's one of the reasons I love Lagrangian dynamics is because it is a perspective that time and time again, it proves itself useful even when we learn new fundamental forces and new perspectives, the principle of least action stays the same. So we know that this is supposed to be true uh, for the L that we learned, for the Lagrangian that we're going to model with our neural network. 
And so you can essentially, this is just a bunch of math, you can pause the video and work out that this is all true. This is also in the original paper. You can kind of derive what these partial derivatives with respect to that Lagrangian are, and you can derive some properties, and you can essentially figure out um, you know, that this Q double dot should equal this expression here in terms of my Lagrangian uh, and Q and Q dot. And this is something that can be computed using automatic differentiability in a modern uh, machine learning language like JAX or like Torch. So really, really cool idea is that you can compute all of this right-hand side relatively easily using JAX, and then you can incorporate that these two terms, this term on the right and Q double dot, had better equal each other in a loss function. You can literally say Q double dot minus all of this stuff that you can compute with JAX and put a norm on that. And now that's a term in your loss function that says if that loss function term is small, then your Euler-Lagrange equations are being satisfied. Really clever idea. We are choosing an architecture. We're choosing to learn the Lagrangian and we add a custom loss function so that the Euler-Lagrange equations are satisfied. And you do it with all of this nasty math and then JAX. And this is a custom version of a neural ODE. So that's another important point, is that the kind of naive benchmark version of this is just a neural ODE. A neural ODE is like a continuous time version of a ResNet, where you're learning the right-hand side of a differential equation with your neural network. You're learning this, you know, x dot equals f of x. So the Lagrangian neural network in principle is a lot like a neural ODE, except with this intermediate step that we're learning a Lagrangian first uh, before doing it. So you can download all of this code here. It's actually really easy to uh, get this working and run it and test it out yourself. Um, you can try it for different systems, different uh, Euler-Lagrange equations, um, and the code is here. So I encourage you to try it out. Um, and there's a nice little comment, I think I'll show it in the next slide, basically saying, you know, it's surprisingly easy to implement this in JAX. So this could be kind of a mess to implement. It's relatively easy uh, in, in JAX. And the key thing we're doing here is we're building a, um, uh, an, you know, a, basically a big feed forward neural network to learn the Lagrangian. In fact, this is the code right here. It's just, you know, uh, three dense layers with you know some activation functions to learn this Lagrangian and then you're going to use JAX to compute all of the partial derivatives with respect to Q and Q dot to make sure that this formulation of the Euler-Lagrange equations is in fact satisfied. And so again, um, it's essentially a neural ODE with some additional structure, this additional intermediate step of learning the Lagrangian and a custom loss function to make sure that once you learn that Lagrangian, the Euler-Lagrange equations are actually being satisfied by your data, okay? Um, and I think, where did I see it here? Um, yeah, perhaps surprisingly though, we can implement this operation in a few lines of JAX. Uh, see appendix, we publish our code on GitHub. So solving Euler-Lagrange with JAX, this didn't have to be easy. This term here could have been a real mess, but it's actually relatively easy with modern machine learning workflows like JAX or Torch. Okay, so um, this is one of my favorite uh, kind of physics-inspired neural network architectures uh, because it takes one of the most fundamental ideas in all of physics. Again, this transcends, it's not just true for classical mechanics, you know, uh, the, the principle of least action, kind of Lagrangian dynamics are true much more generally than just classical dynamics. This allows us to bake in that Lagrangian physics through kind of two stages. One, through an architectural choice to model the Lagrangian itself, and then through a custom loss function that allows you to enforce, or at least promote, that the Euler-Lagrange equations are being satisfied on your trajectories uh, for the L that you're learning. Really, really cool idea. I highly encourage you to you know, download this code, try it yourself, see if you can break it, see how much noise you can add on the data and still get it to work. I think there's a lot of cool things you can do to play around with this. Um, you know, see if you can extend this to work on non-deterministic or non-classical mechanical systems. See if you can make this work on you know, some exotic physics where we know that Euler-Lagrange is still true.
Okay, um, really, really cool paper and a really cool kind of take on the Hamiltonian neural network that has some key benefits. Okay, thank you.